We are just entering a brand new year and now is a really, really good time to reflect on the year that's gone by, but also use the opportunity to set some financial goals for 2021. I'm gonna go through 12 goals that we can all set to make sure that we are better off financially in this new year. Now you don't need to incorporate all of them obviously, but they should all give you some guidance into getting to understand what is actually achievable in a year. And the goals that you do choose to set, we can now put a cause for action into making sure that they are achieved in 2021. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Before we go into the goals, it's really, really important that you and I understand why this is actually needed. We all have a personal milestone that we would like to achieve within our lifetime. And this milestone is going to differ between person to person. But knowing what that end milestone is really helps set in stone why these financial goals are so important. My personal end goal or, or milestone, shall we say, is to be financially independent by no later than 40 years old. This means I want to be financially secure without having to rely on my day-to-day -day job. That means I need to set goals in between to make sure I'm on the right road to achieving this final end milestone of mine. Plus, I also want a dog. Now, the first goal that we can set in place is to make sure we are building an emergency fund. Now, emergency fund is there to cover any unexpected dips in our income in the near future. Typically, this fund will hold about three to six months of your monthly salary, because if 2020 taught us anything, that means we need to prepare for the unexpected. Who would have thought that we would be living through a pandemic, which has caused job losses to skyrocket worldwide in the year 2020? And therefore, to help us sleep better at night, it would be really useful if we had a fund that would cover any dips in our income, and usually this is between three to six months. My emergency fund actually depleted last year, but for different reasons. I had some unexpected costs that I had to cover for my new property. So my goal for this year would be to build up that emergency fund and make sure it is sitting on that three month buffer that I feel comfortable with. I choose the option of putting them within a high interest regular savings account, but a more and more popular way of doing this is to save your emergency fund within a premium bond. I did a video on this a few weeks ago, so check that out if you want to to learn more. The next one is to make a weekly meal plan. If you are responsible for the food within your household, I highly suggest that you make a weekly food plan before you go out shopping. Now, this is a great way to save some money because going into a shop, knowing what your weekly food plan is going to be, means that you're less likely to make impulse purchases. But not only that, we actually started making a food plan last year. And within our household, not only did we save money, but it drastically reduced our food wastage because we knew what we were gonna eat and when it was going to be eaten. Also, don't go shopping on an empty stomach. That is probably the biggest mistake that you'll ever make. <laughs> The third goal is to find your latte factor. Now I did a video on this very, very early on in my YouTube career. It's actually quite cringy to watch it, but it is still a really, really useful video. Now the latte factor is a concept where you have to find a small expenditure that you are making on a regular basis and try and get that removed from your spending habits. And that is because in that moment, the price of a cup of coffee, which is where the latte factor was dubbed from, might be really small, but over time it can equate to hundreds to even thousands of pounds and you probably don't even notice. One of my latte factors was that I used to buy lunch at the work canteen, and this used to cost me seven to eight pounds per day on average. Now, I know this is quite expensive for lunch, but in that moment, seven to eight pounds doesn't seem so much, but if you do the math, this is actually costing me almost 2,000 pounds per year, and that is a lot of money. So I decided to swap it out and make bigger dinners at home, and then any leftovers I would then take into the office to finish off. And that is a cheaper alternative, which saved me a lot of money once I implemented that, and I did that about two years ago. Now, there are so many different examples of what a latte factor could be. I would encourage you to find out what yours is, and then try and use any savings that you get from that to pay off any debt that you have or put it into to savings and investments. Now, the fourth one is to get a side hustle. Now, a side hustle is a great way of earning extra income outside of your normal day-to-day -day job. And it's not out of the question that some of these side hustles can, in fact, replace your regular income. Now, I am involved in a few side hustles. Some of them make me some money instantly. Now, if you want to see what those are, check out my video from last week. And I have some hustles that have a long-term goal to them as well. For example, this YouTube channel. And I also have a food blog with some close mates of mine 
that we started a few years ago. It's called Plan and Eat if you want to check it out. Now one of my main goals for 2021 is for at least one of my long-term hustles, whether it be ones that I have now or some that I discover in this new year, at least have really good strong growth that would indicate to me that I can generate some money from this in the near future. And that is why I have set some time aside this month to really go through the plans for Financial Madness and to really understand what I want to achieve from this. So let me know in the comment section down below if you have any ideas of where I can also take this channel and I will definitely consider it. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe with notification bell on. I release a video every single Monday talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. Now, the fifth goal is to pay off any debts that you may have. Now, this can range from credit card debts to personal loan debts to even your mortgage. Student finance isn't really a debt, it's more of a tax, so I really wouldn't consider that to be in the same ranking as all the other ones that I've just mentioned. Last year was quite an achievement for me and my partner as we managed to purchase our very first property, but it is a huge renovation project, which meant that we had to also take out a personal loan on top of our mortgage to cover the costs. Now, both me and my partner have excellent credit scores, which is why we were able to find a really good deal for our loan. But in order for me to achieve that end goal of financial stability and independence outside of my main job, I need to get this debt cleared as soon as possible. So my goal for this year would be to make as many early repayments to this personal loan as possible. Goal number six is to start investing. Now, investing in the market is a really, really good way to build on your wealth. You can start investing with something really specific like a company stock or a commodity, or you can go with something a bit more general like an index fund. And contrary to belief, you don't actually need that much money to start off investing. You can actually indeed do it in small amounts. A good starting point might be 50 quid, but you can most definitely do it even less than that. Just to test the waters and to see how you feel when you do actually invest in the stock market. My goal for this year is to invest in a specific stock because I want to be able to start generating dividend income. Currently, I heavily invest in index funds, which I think is a great place for beginners, but to take it to the next step, I definitely feel moving towards specific stocks and shares is the way forward. And I'll be doing a video on this on how I decided to buy my very first stock. So watch this space. And the seventh goal is to donate to charity. And that is because it is really important that we think and give to others with the simple reason of because we can and we are privileged to do so. It's always important to find causes that are very close to your heart and make any contributions, big or small. It doesn't even have to be money. It can even be just your own time through volunteering. My top donations last year was to a charity called Gallup, which is an LGBT anti-violence charity. Hospice UK, which is the national charity for hospice care here in the UK and shelter which is a housing and homeless charity and the reason why I personally kept this goal in for my 2021 goals was because I feared that I might not actually contribute much to charity this year purely based on the fact that I've taken on more financial responsibility through my mortgage and my personal loan but I'm determined for this not to happen because these charities do an amazing amount of work and with COVID limiting the amount of fundraising that these places can do it is more and more important for anyone that does have any cash to spare to donate to these charities when they can. Now goal number eight is to sort out your workplace pension. It is really, really important that we start saving for our retirement as soon as possible because the earlier you start, the more time your money has to grow. And I've demonstrated in length in previous videos that we really cannot rely on the state pension to fund our retirement. A, it might not even exist by the time I get there. And B, even if it does exist, the money will probably not sustain the lifestyle that you currently have. So we really need to find other sources to fund our retirement and a workplace pension is an absolute excellent start. Goal number nine is that if you are someone that is looking to buy their first property in the near future, use this opportunity to sit down and make an actual plan to buy your first house and take it a lot more seriously. In my experience, I find a lot of people fall in the trap of saving for the sake of saving just to buy a house in the future, but they don't actually know what that number is. They know it's a big number, but for us to actually achieve this goal, we really need to have a good estimate of what that number could be, because believe me, it goes a long way in actually achieving that goal. Actually spend some time by going online and figuring out how much money you actually need to get onto the property ladder. Also look into some schemes that the government provide to help you do that as well, 
because there are quite a few out there and some of them are really, really good. This is what me and my partner did way back in 2017, so about three years ago. We actually sat down and we said we needed to aim for 55K for us to get the house that we potentially want. Now, the number could have been slightly higher, or slightly lower, but at least we had that goal in mind. And we, from that, we calculated how much we could save. And then from there, we knew for about three or four years later, we would be able to buy a house. And lo and behold, three years later, at the end of 2020, that goal happened. And that wouldn't have happened, believe me, if we didn't take that initial step of actually planning and understanding what that cost actually is. If you want some help into figuring out how much your dream house actually costs, I would suggest checking out my earlier video where uh, I go through all of the other hidden costs that you may not know of, because it's not just the mortgage, you've got a whole host of fees that you need to consider. So that number might be a lot different to what you first thought. Now, the 10th goal that we can set is to build a good credit score. Now, your credit score is really, really important when it comes to borrowing money for a mortgage, as an example. But now borrowing money means that we do have to pay interest, which can be very expensive. And therefore, we want to be able to access the cheapest interest rates that the market will provide. And by having a good to excellent credit score can help you do this. So I would suggest that you check out your credit reports on Experian, Equifax and TransUnion and make sure all the info that you have on these websites are up to date and correct and dispute any information that is incorrect because that has some negative implications on your credit score and can result in some quick wins for you as well. Last year I managed to go from a good score to an excellent score and this year I really really want to be able to achieve the full 999 score that you get with Experian. I'm not sure how likely this is going to be with the fact that I've just taken out a personal loan but as long as I make those timely payments and I plan to do so it will be interesting to see how this impacts my credit score in the end. Now the 11th goal that we can set is to sell off any stuff that we no longer use anymore. The two best places to find things that you don't use anymore is in your attic and in your wardrobe closet. Go through those and find any items of clothing or any gadgets that you can sell on if they are in good condition. Last month we made over 200 pounds by selling old clothes and some old gadgets that we were no longer using on Facebook Marketplace. Now the 12th and final goal that we can set is to find a better savings account because for most people tend to stick with the savings account that they get when they open their current account with their primary bank. But I disagree with this approach because it's probably not going to be giving you the best interest rates on the market. My advice is to do some research on savings accounts because you'll be surprised there's actually quite a lot of choice that we can pick from. Some have pros, some have cons, but it's highly likely that you will find one which balances your needs the best and will still earn you the best interest compared to what you're currently getting at the moment. If you need some help in understanding the different types of savings accounts that are available, I did a video of this earlier on, so be sure to check that out. Cool, so that's it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below what your financial 2021 goals are. And if you found this video really, really useful, I would really appreciate if you smash that like button. That does wonders for the growth of my channel. And as always, I release a video every single Monday. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later.